Hello, how are you? So today in this quick video, I'm just gonna explain some ways that being a minority and being black in like a higher academic like setting, like how you can basically advocate for yourself and make things work without like being like too hard, you know what I'm saying? So basically, um, I'm just gonna explain like some of the issues that may or may not happen, right? So going to a predominantly white institution like I did, right? There are certain things that like, it wasn't necessarily framed for us, like black people, minorities in general, right? So there's gonna be things that we have to like do differently because we may not get the same levels of care as other people may do. And what I mean by care is just like, you know, opportunities or like being like, you know, pushed towards things. I got a personal example. Basically, um, my freshman year, I had a roommate who didn't wanna be in school. And basically, Excuse my dog. But yeah, I had, a, I had a roommate who didn't want to be in school. And we had the same advisor because we were all in this community service program. And basically, he um he was being pushed towards events and things, right? Like he was being told about like opportunities, like he was told about the writing center, he was told about, you know, if you don't want your major, if you're not sure what you want to major in right now, it's okay because you can figure it out later. But I personally, when I went to our advisor, I had outside things going on, and the first thing she told me was just to drop out. I already told her that I wasn't really what I was on, like I didn't really want to do that, but you know, that's all I said. And mind you, this is my roommate, so I basically tell him like, oh, X, Y, and Z said this. And then he was like, oh, well, I told her I didn't want to be here at all, and then she gave me all these different resources, things that I was asking for, right? I'm at, right? Because I was a first generation college student, so I didn't really know what was going on, right? So to get around that, one of the first things I did was I started getting involved on campus, right? I just joined student groups. Now, I at the time didn't know that this was gonna help me figure this out, but it did, right? So basically, um, I joined this group called uh, TOT. It's like a media club, and I got to meet a whole bunch of people. We got to make videos. I got to like get out of my nervous show and things of that sort. So that kind of helped me like advocate for myself. Which was After that, I joined this club named Brotherhood. Now, that club is basically centered around like being black, but also like, you know, navigating through life. And that's where I really got like a lot of help. In the atmosphere and I got to ask questions and like ask questions in about things that were happening to me, right? So one of the things that was happening was I was communicating with my professors and they didn't understand what I was saying. I guess it was maybe the way I formed my sentences or something. Mind you, this is English, like, you know what I'm saying? So I went to Brotherhood and I was, I was just venting about my issue. I wasn't even really telling them, like asking for help. And they're like, oh yeah, that happened to me too. Um, basically worded in this way, right? And I'm not really gonna tell you what that way is because it might be different at whatever university that you're at. So we had a um, thing called a degree completion plan, which my advisor basically just signed off on a piece of paper and didn't really explain it to me what she's supposed to do. But then they explained it to me. It's like, okay, you have to take these amounts of credit. You have to take these amount of classes in this order in order to do that. And they explained like prerequisites and everything. Moves me on to my third thing, or my second thing, sorry. Um, you want to build relationships. Now, when I say build relationships, I'm talking just all around, right? So your professors, you want to do this thing that I like to call like break the barrier, like be like a person, right? Remind yourself, remind your professor that you're a person, but also on the same level, remind your prof remind yourself and like students that they're a person as well. And what I mean by that is we kind of get stuck in like the barriers of life, right? Where like, it's like, okay. Um, this person is supposed to teach me this, blah, blah, blah. They're my professor. Cool. Sometimes that takes the humanity out of it. You're still dealing with the person. Now, not every professor or person is going to be, you know, cool with this level of like thinking or like meeting, but it's still like builds, it builds a foundation, right? So you may, may later in life, you may need that professor to, you know, write your recommendation letter or they might help you with the internship, things of that sort. Right? I'm not saying you should do it solely because of those purposes, but these are systems that help you so that if you're not getting pushed these internships, it's like, hey, I've created this relationship with this professor or advisor or like somebody in your department, wherever you may be, and that's how you can kind of get around these things, right? As well, or your peers. Um, you're basically your classmates, right? 
These are going to be people who may or may not be in your field, whether they decide to stick with the major or not, but they're just as important. Now, you can have fun with them and you can get help from them on like projects and things. Like, y'all might want to go out one Friday or Thursday, whatever day you guys go out at your university. But you also, when you graduate, you might have them as a reference on your LinkedIn. Also, make a LinkedIn. It helps. If they see like social media with like jobs and things like that sort, but I'll get there later. But yeah, you want to talk to your peers, you want to talk to your professors, you want to make that establish that humanity, but also keep it like professional to a certain extent and let them walk to you. Right? Do this might be a little bit hard. You might have to learn how to advocate for yourself a little bit more, and I'm gonna get there soon. But um, think about the resources at your university, right? And you may not know about them, so I'm going to tell you about some that I, I have at mine, and you may have something similar at your university. However, the way you can find out is not only through Google and checking the website of your university, but through this foundation that you're building of your professors, of your friends, of these student groups that you're attending. Okay, Career Center is they help you with a multitude of things. They have interview mock-ups, they have LinkedIn like workshops, they have photos that you can have under there. Um, second, the health center, that just helps with, it's, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's kind of like a, not like a one-stop shop for healthcare on campus, but it helps you with a lot of things. They give you, there's testing, there's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's actually a lot. Um, I know they have therapy, things of that sort. Check to see what your university offers and things of that sort. I know mine, they were giving out the flu shot for free at one point. So if that's something that you're in. A writing center, they help you write papers. I mean, they do a lot more than that. They, they can go over your work papers. They can review it. They can give you, a, you know, uh, like tutoring with like writing. It helps you English papers, maybe workshop topics for your creative writing projects and that sort of thing. Another reason why a job can be so, exp like, <clears throat> another reason why a job can be super important is not only that you're getting money, but you're getting experience that if you were able to get a job in your field, like, will transfer over, but even if you can't, you're able to get experience and you're able to meet more people in a different field of your university who may be able to advocate for you, write letters for you, do all these other things. The main thing that I need you to get from this is if you're going to have to go through a university where there might be like the problems that I've indicated earlier, you're gonna to have to create your own system, right? So creating your own system, like I said earlier, looks like, you know, being around classrooms, meeting your professors, um, meeting different staff across the, like, across the university, things of that sort, maybe even being a part of SGA, things of that sort. It all depends on how you, you can tailor it kind of like how to you are as a person, I'm more of an extrovert person, so like I like to have like a wider circle. But you can also cater your circle to be like your su your support circle to be like where you need it, right? So if you just need it to be in the science complex, and you can cater most of your situations and people that you meet and professors and all of that around this. A quick synopsis of why this is all this is important is because these institutions were not created with people like you and me in mind, right? They weren't created with these things. They're with us being a vital part of learning. So the ways that, the ways of knowing, the ways of learning are limited to the people that were thought of and the foundation of the university in the beginning. Whether you have a university that touts its diversity and its inclusion as well, like as one of its highlighted features, there's still gonna be those elements, especially at a PWI. It's not exclusive to PWIs. It can happen to HBCUs for different reasons, but you know, here we're talking about PWIs. If the foundation was not made on this and other people being there, right? So there may be outdated policies, outdated ways of thinking that still like are the foundational structure of like what you're going through. What I want to indicate, right, is I didn't have anyone who went to college before me, right, that was able to help me, right? But if you do also lean on those people and they can also help you see how they navigate. It's gonna be different from university to university, but depending on different factors, it may be smaller changes. Sorry again for my dog, he's just a baby, right? So that's it, lean on your support system, lean on those people around you, but also give that same support to them around, to those around you because it helps you and them elevate their experiences and their time in college. So that's just some of the ways that you can get around like a lot of these like issues or like lack of support that you're not receiving, right? 
But there's also other ways you can do it, right? It's not just simply that. Like, just these aren't the only ways. These are the ways that work for me. But you may be able to find more, and I encourage you to share those to people and keep building this network so that eventually one day we may not have to use these networks or make these networks ourselves. But at a certain point, it's just like, it's not you being like, oh, I have to go out here because I got to do this, 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 and this. It's like, oh, like, hey, I helped you because I needed help as well. So, yeah. Have a good day.